Of course, the first thing you'll need if you're going to balance pistons and connecting rods is a good scale. I like this one. It works real well. There will be some duplication in this video, but you'll need other small parts. You need small washers that don't interfere with the outside diameter of the bearing, and you also need to make some small spacers. Now this video is just meant to give you ideas. You can do this any way you choose. And you can use whatever bearings you have on hand. In this photo you can see that I've used a stud. Now you don't have to use a stud. You could use a bolt but it needs to be threaded the entire length. So you can jam it with a nut as you see here. The washers and bearings must not interfere with each other and must turn easily, freely. The reason for using bearings, and it is essential to use bearings, is that when you set the rod down on these bearings, it allows the rod to move a little bit, the fixture to move a little bit, and it won't affect the measurement, the weight measurement of the rod. This photo explains what I mean by the side movement. When you set the tip of that rod down, as shown here, the small end, the wrist pin end, you want it to sit directly on that and not try to move sideways either way. It depends on the rod as to where you remove metal. This is a VW rod. This is where I would remove the metal. Mark your rods before you start weighing or removing metal. This scale has a tear reading which allows and takes into consideration the weight of the adapter on it and goes back to zero. As far as the adapter for the large end, the crank end, you can make your own adapter. You could use something like a skate wheel with bearings in it. But it needs to be fairly large, and the reason for that being you want to keep the rod level without having to constantly adjust and turn the adjusting screws. For an accurate measurement, the rod should be close to level. The top arrow shows the adjusting screws that go through the lower bracket that has elongated holes so that the bracket can be pulled away from the top bracket. And the second arrow, the middle arrow, shows a quarter inch stud that I used to support the adapter. And the bottom arrow shows the bearings that I used. You can use any configuration of bearings that you choose. I used three in this case. And this shows the adapter, which is roughly three quarters of an inch wide. And if you need to shim it up a little bit with something like masking tape to make these fit together, that's fine. But use your own configuration. And this is the entire weight setup. And uh, says more about the elongation of the holes and the brackets and how they're allowed to swing. And this is weighing the crankshaft end. This shows where I have removed metal from the wrist pin end of the connecting rod. There will probably be more parts to this video. Uh, I'm going to do some work at my shop as far as removing the metal and doing the actual balancing. And also I'll be doing other things like CCing cylinder heads for volume, balancing the pistons, piston rings, Teflon buttons, and wrist pins. So check for more video parts at a later date. I hope this video helps you. At 76, I'm still working on cars. I wanted to explain to you the use of this little device I made to 
way pistons and connecting rods. The critical thing in doing this is that when you mount the rod to this stand, it tends to shift a little bit one way or the other sideways. You need to make sure that you move your scale to where the rod doesn't shift at all for an accurate measurement. Now this little adapter here I made out of uh, a piece of wood I cut with a hole saw and then I cut part of a PVC 90 degree elbow to make a uh, outer rim for that little wooden wheel. This of course is set up for the big end. The little end would go here. Now these bearings are available from Amazon. Uh, they are, and let me read that to you, a quarter inch by five eighths. Come in a pack of ten. They were eleven ninety nine, and this is twenty nineteen prices. So what you need to do is weigh this adapter I made, and after weighing the adapter, they have a setting called the tear setting, which will set the scale back to zero after this has been added. So it disregards the weight of this adapter. I believe I ordered this postal scale from Amazon. The name of it is Smartway. The wood shown here is a piece 7 by 10 inches, 3 quarter inch plywood. The upright piece of wood is 4 inches by 8 inches, screwed to the side of the platform with two drywall screws. These corner brackets are available at any hardware store. These came from Walmart. They're 3 inch corner brackets. These little spacers that I made are made from a piece of supply tubing for a toilet. And there's little washers that I use to keep that tubing from hitting the side of the bearing. And this stud, this stud is a stud I had from something I did with a VW engine. I've forgotten what it was. Quarter inch stud though roughly. The measurement of this piece of wood in order to fit on the scale is 3 inches by 3 inches. The purpose of the bearings is that when you put the rod on this little device, it tends to pull the fixture that holds the rod on top of the scale. It tends to shift it back and forth, and that disturbs the reading, upsets the reading of the scale. So it's best to use roller bearings or ball bearings so that that doesn't happen. And still you need, like I said before, you need to take extreme care to make sure this is not pulled one way or the other sideways when you mount that rod for an accurate measurement. It's also very important that this little adapter be allowed to swing and self-center. And you see here it's also adjustable if need be. You can see here where there's a space between the two corner brackets. In order to do that, where it'll swing free, you need to elongate these two holes with a quarter inch drill. And I've covered the part of that elongated hole with a piece of tape to keep it centered where I want it. But that's what you need right there. Works great. I want to give credit to Cars, Bikes, and Coffee YouTube page and their YouTube video on how to balance pistons and rods. You need to see that in addition to my video. Now, I took my ideas here and improved upon them slightly from their ideas. But like them, the first one I made did not work so well. This is an improved version, the final version. This should work just perfectly. You weigh your rods and pistons and you take the lightest one of the group 
and you grind the others down to match that lightest piston or rod. You can do that using a bench grinder or you can do it with a belt sander. But you have to do it slowly and carefully because you don't want to take too much and go beyond what you need. I have a piece of saran wrap on that scale to protect it from the oil. I want to mention that a metal BB weighs four tenths of a gram, so that gives you an idea of how much metal to remove. Six hundred and one point eight grams. But I want to weigh it again. Six hundred and one point nine grams. Six hundred and one point eight grams is what I'm going to go with. And that is for number four rod. Five ninety seven point one. Let's do it two more times to be sure. Five eighty four point five. Six oh seven point three. See, it's critical to measure this several times, weigh it several times. You have to get that fairly well centered on that scale to get an accurate reading. Six hundred seven point two for that. This is number three rod. Again, I'm going to do it one more time here. Six hundred and seven for that. Six hundred for that number three rod. Okay, now number one rod. Five ninety three point six five ninety three point five Five eighty six. Let's try this another time. Five ninety two point one. I'm not happy with that yet. I don't, you've got to place this rod just perfectly to get the same readings. Five ninety three point seven. Five ninety three point five, and I'm going to accept that as the final reading on it. Again, that's number one rod. These are stock VW rods here. They have not been balanced or, at all. Now, on each rod, I take my die grinder or Dremel tool and mark one, two, three, four on VW rods. And this is number two rod. Five ninety six point eight. Five 
596.9 I'm going to accept that as the final reading too on number two rod Now these rods are from CB performance. These are new rods from their new casting and supposedly they have already been balanced, clearanced, and this is number one rod. Five thirty eight point six, first reading. Five thirty eight point seven. Five thirty eight point seven. So I'll accept that as the final reading for this one too. And that is number one rod again. Number two rod. Now when I say clearance, this VW engine I'm building now is going to have a stroker crankshaft in it. And it'll the rods will have to be clearance to clear the case. Okay, number two rod, 539 539.6 539.5 for number two rod. Five thirty nine point two. Five thirty nine point three. You have to be careful with the scale. I don't want to drop a rod on it and break it. Delicate piece of equipment. 538.8 and I'll accept that for number three rod. Number four rod 539.8 539.6 and 539.4 5 there it changed to 5 I'll accept that as the final reading for number 4 rod Since I have all of my equipment at my shop, my grinders, I won't be balancing those rods here at my home today. I'll just be measuring them. And when you weigh your pistons for the lightest piston, you need to weigh the piston, the piston rings, and the wrist pin for the lightest one. I'll be posting Fast Times at Farmington Spring 2019 soon, so please watch for it.